So the next part of putting everything back together. Today, I'm going to get the spark plug back in, the valve cover back on, the carburetor and the intake back on, as well as the intake for the air box onto the carburetor. We'll see how much further we can get from that, but that's the uh, biggest things that I wanna get done today. But we're just about done with putting this engine back together. Then hopefully we can turn it on and see if it starts. All right, so I got the valve cover on. I got this part of the way on just connected down here because that's just a massive pain to get that bottom bolt screwed in just because of the way that intake is curved out like that. So I moved that around, kind of finagled it. This valve cover, unless you drop the engine, is a huge pain to get back in. And you guys, if you saw the original video of to earn everything apart, it was a huge pain to get it out. So I knew that going back on was gonna be a pain. And you can see all the gasket maker that I ended up getting all over just because I was trying to move it around. But it squeezed out. Of course, before I uh, started wiping it up, it squeezed out all the uh, new sealant just fine. So it's got a nice bead on it. So now all I have to do is just torque everything down. The torque values are in the So manual. we're going to have a look here. <sighs> Cylinder head cover bolt. 8 millimeter goes to 17 foot-pounds. 6 millimeter is 9 foot-pounds. Small head. Spark plug has its own torque as well. So I'm going to get everything situated, and then we'll start doing that. So here I am now, got the intake back on and tightened down. I did some uh, stuff here on this side, which I didn't show on camera, but I got this oil line and the oil bolt. It's got a hole in it through the center here and then a hole at the end of the shank. So that feeds oil down to here or vice versa. So I got that put on. I got that put on. There's two bolts here that I forgot to install that was in that bag full of parts. And with this, there is those two copper washers. So I put one here underneath the bolt head and then the other one underneath this thing here, just like how it was when I took it off. So all I have to do now is just hook the carburetor back up. I'm gonna have to put this back on at some point and uh, put the engine mount hanger back on that's over there in the parts bucket so we're uh just about done with the engine and then all it's going to be is i gotta fill it up with oil i gotta check the valve adjustments see what they're at my buddy was saying that he had messed with it a little bit before he gave up on this uh, bike so i'm going to check those and make sure that they're still within spec or adjust them if i need to and uh, i think that'll be just about it at some point we'll be able to put all the other bike stuff back on. I just slid the carburetor back in place. I had this installed, this uh, clamp, screwed that down, tightened it up. Carburetor's good, it ain't going nowhere. So now I'm just going to put the engine hanger back on. Well, that's right here. we have left is the air filter the other part of the air box the charcoal canister right there in the middle the uh, exhaust hardware I got to put the exhaust back on I've got to put the spark plug back in which yeah I have not already done that so this is the method that I have to use to reinstall the spark plug I have to use this tool in order to do it just because it's such a weird angle and you just have to rotate it in place that's all done spark plug boot wires hooked back up so 
Now I'm going to finish off with the installation of the carburetor's airbox. Yep, and this is the way that I chose to do it. Which of course, it being old rubber, it's gonna be somewhat difficult to move it around. All we gotta do is just slide it back on. And I can feel it around the other side, that's good. Good, going nowhere. Before I forget. All right, so that's good. Pretty much on the home stretch now. And it's been a couple weeks since I last worked on this, but we're getting pretty close to finishing everything up. So I just figured that we would uh, keep pressing on and I'll just smash all these clips together and you guys will see that. But anyways, so now I'm about to reinstall the exhaust. This is gonna be relatively simple. Kinda wish I had the stock exhaust for it. Cause I'm, when I was younger I used to like louder exhaust, the Flowmaster mufflers on cars, but as I've gotten older, I don't really care much for that anymore. And definitely on a motorcycle. I mean, everybody says, you know, loud pipes save lives, but the physics of that really doesn't make sense because if you've never noticed somebody who's got an open exhaust on a Harley, you never really hear them until they're like right behind you or passing you anyways. So when I came to that realization, it's kind of like, eh, not really my thing personally. Uh, now I gotta pull the hardware out of here and look up the torque value. Can't remember what that is offhand. So I'm likely gonna go with a uh, universal torque on this. Let's find the best way to get this back on. If I remember right, you have to flip these over just like that. Throw both the nuts on. Excuse me, so I ended up torquing it to 12.5. I just went with this exhaust pipe joint nut, 12 foot pounds. You know, a torque's a torque on something like this. You just don't want the stuff flying off with all the vibrations, so I think I'm okay with that. I'm not entirely sure that that was the correct torque. I could have used this universal torque up here at 40 foot pounds but I didn't really want to risk that and seeing that there was such a big split in between the ratings on these, uh, I just figured that I would rather under torque something like that than over torque it. So if it becomes a problem where the vibrations are rattling that off or you know I need to tighten up the exhaust system a bit, that's okay. But now I just need to tighten this up and then uh, I've got the oil change and I've got the valve um, lash check just to make sure that that's still good. That's all tightened up now. Now we're just going to remove the oil filter. I have already checked this and this in here, there's no oil left in the bike. So those are uh, two other things that you have to open up when you change the oil on one of these bikes. Undo this. A new filter right here, which comes with a new O-ring as well. 
there is a big o-ring as you guys just saw so we got to kind of work this off a little bit comes off pretty simple old filter this is a spring for that don't lose it and then I'm just going to peel off the old o-ring new o-ring use some of this motor oil inside to lube it up so this cap basically just goes on just like that then you want the spring to go back inside make sure it stays you kind of have to turn it to get it to stay and then you'll have a little nub here just to kind of line it up but the whole goes right up against this. Just gonna use the bolts to secure this in place. The filter cover bolts, 108 inch pounds or nine foot pounds. So oil of the day is Walmart special 10W30 full synthetic. Now this engine's going to take just about two quarts, maybe a little bit more. I have a third quart just in case. So I'm going to dump two quarts in. Oil is a little on the high side, but until we get the machine running and all the oil circulating into the rest of the engine, we'll check it again. So I've got the fueler gauge ready and I've got the engine set at top dead center. So now we're going to pull these caps off. These are a 24, but I have universal socket handy so we're just going to use this and all you do is just take these top caps off it's like we got a piece of debris there so just set that there but i'm going to undo all four of these and then i'll meet you guys back at the next all right, step so the process to adjust the valves on these bikes is very simple with the bike at top dead center you're going to have a range but the numbers that you want to set this to, you're going to want 0 0.005 for the exhaust and 0 0.004 for the intake. So what we're going to do here is do the exhaust first on this side. It's the same procedure for all four, but we're going to undo this retainer nut. So it's off just enough. 0 0.005 feeler gauge and back off on this just so you can get the feeler gauge underneath the arm. But you just want it out enough so you can get the gauge in and kind of the best, kind of how it feels, you know, the easiest to get it in and out. All right. So Case in point, why it's good to check this is he had been into this before, the guy that gave me this bike, and all four of these were completely out of spec. These two were the worst. Um, both the adjustment screws were way out of spec. They were tightened down way too much. So I've got them all the way out. So now we have some movement on each rocker. We got more on the intake than the exhaust but we got some on the exhaust here. So we'll start with the exhaust first. Got the 0 .005, find the best way to get it in there. And really you want just enough tension on it
And there it is, just made contact. Yeah, so take her out just a little bit. This one feels a little tighter than the other side, but I think it'll be okay. I think I'll be happy right about, maybe right about here. That's pretty damn close, so just tighten her down. Double check. That's good. So now it's the same process for the other side. You guys don't need to see that. Um, I've already done this side on over here, this one and the one behind it. Those are good, caps are back on. Just need to finish up here. Put this cap on. Install this one. Perfect.